All right, this is a video that explains perimeter and area and the formulas involved. Okay, so let's look at these shapes. So we wanted to find the perimeter of this. Um, remember we learned that perimeter is just the distance around a shape. So we want to add all the sides together to get the total perimeter. So in this shape, we're missing a couple of sides. We don't know the length of this side and we also don't know the length of this side. So to figure that out, we can use the other sides to help us. Um, okay, so let's say we wanted to figure out the top. We can see that this side plus this side should equal the length of the top side. So five plus three would be eight centimeters. Okay, and then we can also see that we're missing this side here. So if we just add this, oh, not add, actually. Since we know the length of this super long side, 11 centimeters, we can subtract this side, five centimeters, to give us this missing length here. Because we know that this side, oh, maybe I should use another color. We know that this side and this side will have to add up to 11. Okay, so if this side is five, this side must be six centimeters here. All right, so to get the perimeter of this shape, we just add up all the sides. So eight plus 11 plus three plus six plus five plus five. And that will give us the perimeter of the whole shape. 19, 22, 32, so 38 centimeters for this shape. <clears throat> um, and then we also have circles. So just a quick explanation of circles. Um, here's where the formula comes from for the circumference of a circle. So if you didn't know this already, pi, um, you may have seen it as like 3.14. People like just approximate pi to that amount. It actually goes on forever. So 3.141592. It just keeps going. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> but it turns out that every circle in the world, if you took a circle and you measured the circumference of that circle, so the distance around the whole circle, and then you took that value and you divided it by that circle's diameter you would get the value pi. So pi is equal to the circumference of any circle divided by its diameter. And it turns out any circle, no matter the size, even that circle, if you take its total circumference and divide it by the diameter, you will always end up with the same number, this irrational number, which we call pi. Okay, so we can use that information to help us find the circumference. So if I multiply both sides by diameter, I end up with the formula for circumference. So circumference is equal to pi times diameter. Or you might also see it written as, whoops, two pi r, because we know two times the radius is equal to the diameter. So both of these formulas are used for circumference. And that's why they work. So if we wanted to find the circumference of this circle, we know it has a radius of four. So we can just use the formula two times pi times radius. Or eight times pi. Um, and then when you're using <coughs> pi, you can use 3.14 or you can use the pi button on your calculator. Um, and we would end up with 25.13 centimeters. So that'd be the circumference of the circle. Okay, moving on, area. Okay, so let me just go through and explain how the area formulas work. So if we want to find the area of a rectangle, area of a rectangle is just length times width or base times height in this case. Um, and that's just because if you think about that, Area is just the number of square units inside the shape. 
Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If my base was nine and my height is one, two, three, four, five, five times nine would be 45. And if you count all these little boxes, I've got 45 of them all together. So that's how the area formula works. So base times height, length times width, whatever you want to call them. You're multiplying the two sides together. And let's see how all the other area formulas relate to the form, the area of a rectangle. So if you take a parallelogram, a parallelogram is really just a slanty rectangle. So if you just like took off this piece of the rectangle, I wonder if I could do that. No, just kidding. Um, you could place it over here, so get rid of that, and you would end up with a, an actual rectangle. So that's why the area formula for a parallelogram is just base times height. So we don't care about these slanty sides. We don't care about them. All we care about is the height and the base. And the height and the base are always at 90 degrees to each other. <clears throat> okay, then let's look at a triangle. So the area formula of a triangle, if we think about it, it almost looks like, well, it looks like half a rectangle. So if I were to just add these two sides to it, we can see that is the rectangle that we started with. And we know the formula for a rectangle is just base times height. But in this case, we only have half of it. So we're going to divide that by 2. So that's why the area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2. Or you might also see it written as half times base times height. Okay, trapezoid. Okay, to explain this one, let's say I took another trapezoid and placed it right beside this trapezoid. Let's say I made them the same size, but I'm not really gonna work that hard to do that. <laughs> okay, so what I end up with is actually like a parallelogram, right? <clears throat> so if I just, I'm gonna call this base one and I'm gonna call the bottom base two. So this distance here is base one, it's the top of my trapezoid, and the bottom of my trapezoid is base two. These sides are parallel to each other. And I popped another parallelogram beside it, but it's flipped over. So this side here would be base one, and up top here would be base two. And they have the same height. So if I wanted to calculate the area of this gigantic parallelogram, that's what I just turned this trapezoid into. I created two trapezoids, but now, let me just highlight it for you. It actually just looks like a parallelogram. And we know a formula for a parallelogram is base times height. But in this case, the base is actually equal to B1 plus B2, because the base is like this entire distance. So we have to add B1 and B2 together. Then we're gonna multiply that by the height. So that's just the formula of a parallelogram, base times height. But I don't want the formula for this giant parallelogram. I just want the formula for one trapezoid. Whereas I have two trapezoids here. So in order to just get one trapezoid, I'm going to divide this formula by two. So that's how we get the area of a trapezoid formula. So it's a area equals the top plus the bottom multiplied by the height divided by two. You might also see it written as a plus b times height divided by two. Um, the a and the b or the b1 and the b2 are just representing the two parallel sides of a trapezoid, like the top and bottom usually, or yeah, anyways, the two parallel sides. Okay, and then finally we've got our circle. So let's just call this the radius. That's usually the only, that's the only measurement we're given in a circle. Um, and let's just say I divided this circle up into a whole bunch of segments. So I'm going to do that. And then let's say I took all those segments out of the circle <coughs> and I put them side by side. And I alternated the direction. So like I took all these little pieces of pie out and then I stacked them beside each other to try to turn it into a rectangle. So you can see like, that's not the best diagram, but 
I know that the height of this rectangle is radius, right? Because it's like one chunk of my pie is length radius. And then I also know that I took, so if I look at this bottom section here, like how long is that? That's like about half my circumference, right? Because then this part would represent the other half. So half of my circumference, well, the circumference of a circle is two times pi times r. That's what circumference is. So if I divided that by two, so if I just want half the circle, that would be pi times r. So let's call the length pi r. So now if we wanted to write the area formula for a circle, well, we're relating it to a rectangle, which is base times height or length times width. So that would turn out to be pi times radius times radius or pi times radius squared. So that's how you come up with the area formula for a circle. So we got a circle, we got a trapezoid, we figured out a triangle and we started with, oh, and the parallelogram and we started with the rectangle. So that's how all the formulas relate to the formula of a rectangle. So now if you wanna calculate the formula of any shape, you can just use that formula that you helped or you learned how to develop. So the triangle is base times height divided by two. So in this case, we know the base is 10. We know the height is six. They're always at right angles to each other, the base and the height. So the area of this triangle would be 30 centimeters squared. And I wrote cubed, okay. There we go. Okay, here we have a trapezoid. So we know the area formula of the trapezoid is you add the two bases together. So that's the six and the 11. So six plus 11. Then you multiply that by the height. The height of this trapezoid is six meters. So we multiply that by six and then we divide the whole thing by two. So 17 times six divided by two which is um, 21. 21. 7 times 6 divided by 2? No, 17. Oh. Wait, I got this. 17 times 3. What's that? 51? <laughs> 51 meters squared would be the area of my trapezoid. All right, cool. So let's say you do area and perimeter.